In this video, we will explore an extremely useful modeling tool called Dynamic Topology, which allows for the targeted addition of details to a surface. This enables focusing on modeling only in areas that require additional details. Given the various ways this tool can be used, which can sometimes cause confusion, we aim to clarify how to make the best use of it. Firstly, we add a simple plane and enter Sculpt Mode. From here, we activate Dynamic Topology Mode. An alert appears indicating that by activating this mode, colors, UVs, and other attributes will not be preserved. This occurs because we are adding detail, causing changes in the number and arrangement of vertices in the mesh. Before we proceed, let's see what Sculpt Mode within Dynotopo in Blender is used for. Typically, we enter this mode to modify the surface by creating indentations or raising it. However, it is important that the mesh has a sufficient number of faces for the changes to take effect. If the mesh lacks detail, attempting to sculpt it will yield no results. To sculpt the surface, it's necessary to have a sufficient number of faces, so typically I would switch to edit mode and manually add a certain number of faces. At that point, I could switch back to Sculpt mode and, using the available tools, proceed with the actual sculpting of the surface. The issue with this method is the requirement to pre-divide the surface, determining the level of detail uniformly. It is not possible to distinguish between areas that require higher detail from those that require less detail. And it is precisely for this reason that dynamic topology comes to the rescue, allowing to add detail only in the areas where it is actually necessary to sculpt the surface. And starting from a simple plane without any added features, let's see how dynamic topology actually works. So, once activated, we click on OK and we're presented with a series of options available. The difference between these options depends on how we want to add detail and how many faces we want to add depending on the area we are working on. This is where confusion can often arise, so let's try to clarify by analyzing each option individually. To begin, let's start with the simplest method to add details, the constant detail. This means that essentially when we paint, we are adding a consistent number of faces, regardless of the brush size, distance, and other factors. This ensures that we always add the same level of detail to every part of the surface. The level of detail is determined by the resolution, which in this case is a factor relative to Blender's standard unit of measurement. Therefore, the higher this value, the greater the level of detail we can achieve. Let's look at an example right away. When I click on various parts, regardless of the distance and size of the brush, I am adding a constant level of detail. To increase the number of faces, I need to adjust this factor. For instance, by raising the resolution to 5, I add more details as I have set a higher subdivision level compared to Blender's base unit. If I increase this value to 10, a finer level of detail is added in proportion. When will we use the constant detail method? We will implement it when the desired final detail is well-defined, regardless of the zoom level and brush size. We will always add faces that have exactly the same dimensions. When I attempt to refine certain areas by sculpting in closer, the level of detail does not improve. Therefore, I would need to manually raise the resolution in order to incorporate more detail. Of course, this approach leads to a significant loss of time because every time I move to an area where I want to add more details, I have to manually increase the subdivision value in order to add the necessary details. For this reason, the relative method of adding detail comes to our aid. This method allows for adding details based on the distance from the surface. As you move away, the details are coarser. While getting closer, they become increasingly finer. The basic level of detail is defined by a parameter called detail size, which represents the size in pixels of the edge. 
If this value is decreased, there will be a greater subdivision at the same distance, leading to a final result. It is important to note that at the same distance, the size of the brush does not matter because it only determines the area where the detail will be added. If I enlarge the brush, I achieve a level of detail. If I shrink it, I achieve the same level of detail applied to a smaller area. What matters is the distance relative to the surface and the base level of detail size defined here. Then we have the third method, the brush detail, where the actual size of the brush plays a fundamental role. This is perhaps the most flexible method imaginable. The level of detail depends not only on the distance, but also on the size of the brush. For instance, at the same distance, using a large brush will have less details. Conversely, by reducing the brush size while keeping the same distance, you will achieve higher resolution. But not only that, with the same brush size, I will have an even higher resolution if I get closer to the surface. With this mode, depending on the distance, I can increase or decrease the detail simply by adjusting the brush size. This system provides me with maximum flexibility to define the level of detail in every part of the mesh. And let's move on to the final method called manual detail. In this case, we don't add or remove details based on brush size or distance, but rather use this method to fill the entire surface with the set resolution. When we define a resolution and click on Detail Flood Fill, the surface is subdivided with a specific level of detail, if we reduce the value and perform Detail Flood Fill again, we effectively change the overall mesh resolution. But we have the last parameter to consider, the Refine method. This parameter allows us to define whether we want to add or subtract resolution, or only add it or only remove it. Let's say we switch to Relative Detail and set a detail size of 6. Now let's try sculpting the surface. In this case, since the resolution was lower than what was already present, we added detail. If I had chosen a lower level of detail, such as 30 or 50, I would decrease the resolution. Let's consider a more extreme example, 100. In that case, the decrease in resolution is evident because I reduce the number of faces. This depends on the configuration of the refinement method, where I have set both the subdivision of faces and their collapse. Let's suppose we want to avoid the removal of faces and instead focus on adding new faces when a higher resolution is needed. Therefore, as a refinement method, I will only choose the subdivide option. With this approach, if the set resolution is lower than what is already defined at a specific location, when sculpting, I won't decrease the resolution as would happen with the previously explained method. Ultimately, dynamic topology is an extremely useful method for sculpting a surface by adding resolution only where needed, without excessively increasing detail in non-critical areas. The various methods available help us to adjust resolution either upwards or downwards depending on what is deemed most appropriate.